the luck. It's all about perspective. Your experience of life is affected by the perspective you view it from. Depending on the meaning we give to situations or events, we will feel and behave differently. For example, studies show that religious people have a higher tolerance for pain than non-religious. This is because they have framed pain in a certain way according to their belief. Another example, when a nun adorns the scarf, she is seen as religious. But when a Muslim woman does the same, she is seen as oppressed. Professor Richard Wiseman has been researching luck for over a decade. He says, in their minds, they know they're fundamentally lucky. These assumptions become expectations, which in turn become self-fulfilling prophecies. Because lucky people expect things to work out in their favour in the end, when ill fortune comes their way, they reframe it or just ride it out till it turns back in their favour. Now here are a few examples of a positive perspective, mindset, framing, whatever you want to call it. James Dyson, the inventor of the world famous Dyson Hoover, tested about 5,000 prototypes. That means 4,999 failures he had to pick himself up from. Let's look at the famous book, Gone with the Wind. This was rejected 38 times before being published. Harry Potter was rejected 12 times and Twilight was rejected 14 times. If we look for examples within Islamic history, the love the companions had to fast in the long days of summer despite it being agonizing, the scholar's love for standing in prayer in the darkness of the night despite it being tiring, Muslims of the past travelling long distances for pilgrimage despite it being excruciating. The list can and does go on. Now loads of people are constantly taking advantage of reframing things. Yeah, you got advertisers who get paid a lot of money to frame products in the best possible light. You got movies who have to frame their scenes in a certain way to engage their audience. You got the news which frames its stories based upon drama and well discord. Now I'm sure you're thinking that's well and good mate, yeah? Give me some practical advice. Alright, I'm going to give you three in this video, yeah? Alright, so number one, ask yourself constructive questions. We ask ourselves such unhelpful and destructive questions like, why does this always happen to me? Why don't I like myself? Why can't I lose weight? Now, Ask questions that will empower you, yeah? Reframe these questions. For example, say, how can I easily stop procrastinating? Or how many ways can I find to lose weight? Or how can I easily start to love myself? This puts your brain in a more resourceful state where it is searching for answers rather than switching off. Number two, Prioritize what is important. Yeah, There's a really lovely rule which is called the 5 by 5 rule. Which is, if it's not gonna matter in 5 years, don't spend more than 5 minutes being upset by it. Just imagine if your life is a long tape. Now think of the argument you've just had or a presentation you have to do or a job interview you have to go to and ask yourself how much of the tape does this event actually take? <laughs> exactly. So don't make it seem like it's your entire life. Now have a look at these two circles. Most people are like the first one. They focus more on the past and the future and ignore the present. The very few and fortunate are like the second one. 
Here you will get more out of yourself and your life on a daily basis. Just remember this key key principle. You always get more of what you focus on in life. Okay, let's move on to number three. Rewire your habits. Over the past 20 years, scientists discovered that neural pathways of your brain change over time. The brain is dynamic, not fixed as everyone previously believed. They named this idea that our brain architecture can change neuroplasticity. This supports the idea that regular positive thoughts and acts can rewire your brain towards, well, positivity. Now how? Well, listen to regular inspirational talks, meditation, reading biographies of inspirational people, doing dhikr while pondering on its meaning, as well as Quran and Salah while also pondering on its meaning. Without making this video too long, let's just focus on what I've mentioned for now. Um, I would definitely recommend this book called Change Your Life in 7 Days. It's actually got some practical techniques uh, in there that you can use and uh, yeah, try them out. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.